you're listening to the Simply Vegan podcast, the show that's all about making veganism easy, fun and accessible. Brought to you by the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine, you can catch us every Tuesday and every Thursday. Well, if you'd like to try our lovely magazine that's packed with fresh and nutritional vegan recipes, you can try an issue for just 99p by visiting veganfoodandliving.com forward slash podcast. And you can choose between a print or digital plus membership with access to thousands of plant based recipes at your fingertips in a fully searchable digital magazine archive. We'd also love it if you subscribe to our podcast to ensure that you get alerted about every new episode. Well, today I'm chatting to Paul Brown, founder of Bowl. Paul shares his journey from meat-eating athlete to plant-based pioneer. Um, And he's also going to be sharing some tips on nutrition and how we can pack more plants into our daily diets. Welcome to the podcast, Paul. How are you? I'm great. And super excited to be talking to you today, Holly. Oh, it's really good to see you. I remember seeing you at Vevolution. It must have been 2019. I think you were on, I mean, you won't remember me because I was just in the audience, but I think you were speaking on a panel. Do you remember that? Yes. So, the, yeah, so I did the first pod, uh, podcast, the first Vevolution event I attended and spoke at was in 2017 when we went uh when we went 100% plant based and then yeah Damien and Judy are just uh awesome trailblazers in this for this whole movement so i then went back a few times and 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 spoke and was on panels but i'm i'm gutted it all kind of came to a stop didn't it over over lockdown and um the pandemic i don't believe it's restarted again but it was it was so, the, the energy at those festivals was insane i i am so sad that vevolution's still not running judy and damien run vevolution don't they but now i think they've kind of gone down a different route and they're not doing the shows anymore but it was yeah like you said the vibe and the energy was just amazing like i remember seeing the happy pair and kind of they were getting everyone to hug before you know hugging was illegal and all of that it was just brilliant and yeah I remember seeing you speak and thinking wow you know you're a really good speaker really inspiring so it's really nice to have you on the podcast um do you want to tell us you know where this all started then because you started off in sport didn't you but you weren't vegan or anything like that no yeah my journey into uh starting Ball. Well, yeah, I was a, I was a snowboard instructor in California, and I did that in my early twenties. Had a bad injury, and one thing led to another. And I was in Los Angeles for the best part of twelve months re- recuperating, and shattered my wrist, dislocated my elbow, and because travel insurance was paying for everything, I convinced my mum back in Manchester that LA was a better place to recuperate than, than <laughs> Manchester. And my mum and dad were always involved in um, restaurants and bars. And so I wrote a business plan whilst I was in LA to start a healthy food, California, Mexican inspired uh, fast food business. So and this was 20 years ago. So pr- prior to Leon, Pod, Itsu, all these, these places weren't on the high street. Came back to the UK, tried to get that going, couldn't get the funding. And then I was down in London. I was working in a cafe at the time, just getting used to what it'd be like to run my own. And Innocent Drinks had just launched. So this was in 2000. I could see in that brand, there was so much of what really sparked my excitement with healthy food and drink over in California. So I knocked on the door at Fruit Towers, met Rich, Adam and John, the founders, because there was only a handful of people there at the time and convinced them to fill up a van those funny grassy vans they used to have and I drove up to Manchester and was selling them out the back of the van for the first few years and then I well I stayed at Innocent for 14 years so it was in 2008 yeah 2008 I launched the um the Innocent Veg Pots with a small crack team of people there and it was great for a brand like Innocent, which is a real power brand to move into the, I hate the term, but the ready meals category. It's been rightly stigmatized for years, five billion yeah. brand category. Exactly. Back in le- mid, late 2000s, it was highly processed, bad packaging, like just not not a good aisle. But um, 
yeah, did that. And then Coca-Cola bought Innocent a few years later and I knew it was it was time for me to go it alone. So I used that 14 years of experience at Innocent to start Ball and we, and we sold our first product on the 30th of April um, 2015. So we just had our seventh birthday. Oh, happy birthday. I love that you remember the exact date of selling your first product. Oh, it's only because it gives us an excuse to party. So yeah. we, <laughs> we, went, we went and played rounders in the park, which was a real dark moment for me because most of the team were much younger than me and I was definitely the worst player. So you refer, <laughs> your original question was about, oh, you started in sport, like uh, those skills have long gone. Uh, and then and then we had a couple of drinks after work. But yeah, no, it's it's um, it's nice to look back because I guess we're going to talk about it in this podcast, but this this, this plant-based vegan movement is is not what it was seven years ago. And it's amazing how it's uh, how it's grown so much. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I, I went vegan four or five years ago. And just in that time, you know, I've seen such a massive shift, which is really exciting. So Bowl wasn't um, fully vegan at first, was it? But it is now. Is that right? Yeah. So we've been 100% plant based since 2017. And yeah, so from 30th of April <laughs> 2015, for those first 18 months, half of the range was plant-based and half of the range um, contained either chicken or dairy. And it was at the end of 2016, we'd just won new business of the year at the National Business Awards. We'd, uh, so I was given a trophy, there's a few thousand people given a trophy by William Hague and uh, everyone was suited and booted and I was there on my own because we only got one free ticket and it, it it was an amazing experience and we were profitable and we donated all our profits to charity action against hunger charity and I was I was I was really excited about what we'd achieved but then I I read um a number of books like how not to die and the food revolution and clearly watched cowspiracy like everyone else has now and um, I also went a lot closer to, I got down the supply chain and, and saw um, saw what goes down. Um, right. And I just, I just had a, sh- a shift in, in, in my head about what I wanted to spend the rest of my life doing. And so I, yeah, I made the decision that we were going to go 100% plant-based and it is easy to look back now with rose tinted glasses, but I'd I'd obviously got a lot of investment from high net worth individuals who were people, you know, friends of mine, or definitely people I, I had a, a lot of a relationship with and respected. And um, for people that don't work in FMCG, it, it takes it takes about two years for bigger companies to develop products. It it takes a quick company about twelve months, and and then the range reviews in the big retailers only happen once every three to six months. So. Uh, uh, taking an FMCG brand plant-based is very different to taking a restaurant plant-based, which you can pretty much do overnight. It takes a lot longer. Mm. Uh, so it was it was very binary. We went to the big retailers and we said, "Were these recipes like we had a Jamaican jerk chicken, we had a Carolyn coconut chicken. I said to them, we're going to stop making these. We're going to stop serving these. They were actually our best sellers. And, um, and we don't have any innovation to replace it, but, but give us a year or two and we're going to, we're going to innovate loads and we know how to develop incredible plant-based recipes and we're just going to really sharpen our North star. So we started the brand and it was all about making it easy for busy people to eat well. And we've just taken that one step further and it's about inspiring the world to eat more plants. And it's just, it's just given us such clarity and it was the best decision we ever made. It was horrendous from a financial perspective (laughs) for a few years, but um, I could have never predicted uh, how much it would grow it's not like I I'm some like red tea leaves or some <laughs> strategic genius I just um the stars aligned for me and uh and the brand and yeah I think it's it's great that there's so many other brands that have, have now gone down that route yeah definitely it was a bold move then I mean so did you go vegan at the same time yes it was okay. it was I was kind of more vegetarian to begin with so I was brought up in um, South Manchester with two brothers and uh, gallons of milk in the morning. And um, as you can imagine, 
evening meal that didn't it didn't include meat and two veg would would have not gone down well. And then playing a relatively high standard of sport, what was drummed into us was to get fit and healthy. You need to be eating kilograms and kilograms of protein coming from chicken the whole time and steaks and all all of that. So uh, I'm not going to lie, making that shift um, shift was tough. Um, but now it's obviously it's it's significantly easier. It's it's normal for me, and um, I'm bringing it's, uh, my my children. I've got an eight year old daughter Isla, and a, 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 my son who's six is about to turn seven. They're vegetarian at school. Um, they're vegan at home, um, and it's more normal. It's 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 it's. I didn't know a vegetarian at school. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a number of a number of people in their class are. Uh, they, they're not ostracized and made to feel weird at, at, at birthday parties and things like that. So I just, I think there's a generational shift where uh, it, it's now not a lot easier to be plant-based, which is why I've got so much respect for the vegans that were banging this drum for decades before we all jumped on the, on the bandwagon, but it's a pretty positive bandwagon to be on. <laughs> yeah, it really is. What, um, I mean, presumably you, you've been quite interested in nutrition then coming from a sports background and then obviously, yeah. you know, running bowl. Um, what have you learned, you know, throughout your journey in terms of like how, you know, nutrition kind of works in our bodies and how we can get more of it on a daily basis? Uh, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think is, is the main, is the main thing. So, uh, there is there is so much rubbish out there about nutrition. Um, I, I, I don't know whether I should say this. I'm going to say it. Uh, so my 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 little boy Jackson was came back from school the other day, and he said to me, "Daddy, um, uh, what one of the teachers told me there is no protein in broccoli." <laughs> And I've been telling him there is protein in broccoli. And she said, you only get protein from meat. Um, so uh, it's, it, it's quite hard <laughs> to get, get people to uh, really understand that you, you can get enough protein from plants. You, you can get all of your macros and your micronutrients and all the phytonutrients and all the vitamins and minerals Um uh, you, you might need to have a few supplements, but I, I think most people could benefit from a few supplements. Uh, everybody thinks they're protein deficient, where it's more like 97% of the the UK adult population get enough protein and 97% don't get enough fiber. Like it, 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 it's such a, um, it's such a confused place that we are in. And as I just said from that, story it's it's hard for people to know who to trust and who to believe if 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 people at school are being told that there is no protein in broccoli and um and obviously the meat uh, and dairy industry which is about as powerful as any industry across the planet uh, right up there with the pharmaceutical industry are banging the drum about um the benefits of of eating these products it's it's uh yeah it's a, we've got a tough few years ahead of us mm-hmm. it's going to be hard but for me what else have I learned I've learned that the whole system the industrialized um food system is completely and utterly inefficient it doesn't work um uh, the, I'm just started to read a new book actually so the same guy that wrote how not to um how not to die um has uh, started one called how has just written one called how not to diet yeah and it's not about dieting it's have you have you read it I haven't I've got his um how not to die on the shelf behind me actually but I haven't um I haven't read the latest one no oh it's brilliant it's McGregor I'm pretty sure is, is, is the author's name but uh I'm only a few chapters in but it was definitely in the 70s where things shifted and that that was largely to do with the industrialized food production and and how we started to eat we are obviously facing a massive obesity epidemic of uh, huge proportions um obesity is about to overtake smoking as as the number one cause of cancer um 
we really are what what we eat and people really do need to start eating uh, more plant-based foods and I'm under no illusion in my lifetime I'm not expecting the whole world and its dog um talking about Damien Judy earlier they're obviously on the pet food um vegan play at the moment which is amazing um I'm not expecting people to go vegan and the stats are still pretty depressing because only two three percent of the UK are vegan, six, seven percent vegetarian. By the 1950s, as a species, we are on track to eat more meat than we've ever eaten. And, and that's being driven by places like China that are massively increasing. So even though um I feel like I, I live in a bit of a bubble. So I'm 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 in this, I'm in this the whole time. I I, I literally eat, sleep, and drink the uh the plant-powered movement. Um we are only just getting started and um i think there's a huge opportunity with the flexitarians so that massive group of people who are realizing even if it's only one meal a meal a day that's vegan or um a couple of days a week or whatever it is but just kind of small incremental steps that's one of the things i'm most proud about with bolt when we get it's usually a female that writes into us on social media and says they fed um one of our veg pots to uh their boyfriend or father or somebody and it was like they loved it their thai coconut curry and they ate it and they they were waxing lyrical about it and then they were told it was vegan and they just couldn't believe that you could get <laughs> that much flavor from vegan food so there's just uh th- there's a long way to go but i think i think good progress over the last few years yeah definitely and things like bol you know it's so helpful to have there because you know, like you say, I mean, you don't want to class it as a ready meal, but it is, isn't it? It's convenience, but it's, you know, packed with veg. Um, how do you sort of make, do you have like nutritionists that you work with to make sure all the meals are kind of like, you know, balanced and things like that? Yeah, yeah. So we've got two in-house full-time product developers and they are, they've both got a food science background. Uh, we've also got one of our investors is the food doctor, Ian Marber. So he's regularly uh, writing for uh, the big um, Sunday newspapers and so on and so forth. So um, the level of scrutiny that we put into uh, the development of our products is is beyond uh, what people outside of the industry could imagine. Uh, And again, it's one of the bits of feedback I sometimes get from people is I, I really like your 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 products but i always need to add a little bit of salt <laughs> and and they almost say it hesitantly and i see it as the biggest compliment because i'm like <laughs> uh every single product that we make is green or amber on the traffic lights uh, we have no reds whatsoever if you if if there was the traffic light system on the food people eat in restaurants mm. or in fast casual dining it would blow their minds so if people are used to eating food in a restaurant or from delivery or whatever, and then they eat one of our products, I'll hold my hands up. It might not be off the charts as salty <laughs> as what they're used to, but that is a good thing. Yeah. Um, salt, oil, and sugar are, are the killers. That's, that's, they are, they, too much of that leads to the heart problems, leads to uh, many of the issues that, that we're having as a species. So um, yeah, it makes it makes things harder sometimes to be so stringent with our nutritional guidelines, but we won't ever have any reds on the traffic lights. And, but we still need to make sure anything that we make looks beautiful. It tastes amazing and is net nutrient dense. So um, there's a big push at the moment, obviously on protein. So we've developed lots of soups, which are high in protein. We've got one soup, the pea and spinach that's, um, is 35 grams of protein, which is, 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 is more than a chicken breast. We've developing our power shapes, which is over 20 grams of protein. So we've got a one pot meals, which is 20 grams of protein. So we're just, we're trying to debunk those myths um, that people have about um, not getting enough nutrition from plant-based food because it's just absolute nonsense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so frustrating, isn't it? The same old conversation. It's uh, it's crazy that we're still having it. But like you say, it's all about education. Um, so can you think of any tips or tricks then to share with listeners to get more plants into our diets? I know um, a lot of people do the like 
a 30 a week challenge. So trying to get 30 different herbs, spices, nuts, seeds, and obviously fruit and vegetables into their diet, which is quite a good one. I mean, I think one of the big new bits of research that is being shared at the moment, and I think is going to gather a lot of pace over the next few years, is is getting that variety. So it's not necessarily about the absolute amount, but actually getting variety. Um, I mean, from a personal perspective, um, I'm I'm pretty organised. So every single morning... I have athletic greens shake, which I make. Um, I, I put some protein powder in, in that. I'm forever having um, uh, prepared uh, overnight oats and all bran and always putting nuts and chia seeds and frozen fruit and um, uh, love love meal prepping at the weekends. Uh, Ottolenghi is one of my heroes, so always uh, like searching for new ways to um, make aubergine taste good uh, <laughs> without taking hours of preparing it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I honestly think the main tip I can give is is really getting inspired by the chefs and the types of foods that you love and like Indian food, obviously I've been leading the way on and um, plant-based cooking for years uh, and then just adapting some of those recipes that perhaps you normally throw some chicken breast in and don't put the chicken breast in and either put some tofu in it or put some broccoli in it or put some potatoes in it or just, just substitute. And it's interesting I've led on to the substitute word. I'm I'm friends with a lot of people that work in the meat substitute space, and right. uh, I, I I'm uh, I've got so much respect for what they're doing. And clearly, if you look at the success of, uh, it, especially in America, of like the Beyond Meat world, it's it's just insane how well they are doing. And there is clearly going to be. Um, lots of different ways people are going to get their protein in the future. Uh, I, I think we've got to be ready for a bit of a backlash from the industry though, because there's definitely, uh, there's, there's definitely some substitute products out there, which aren't, aren't very healthy for us. And we're only just really learning about the microbiome and our gut and that really controls our entire body. So uh, I think we've got to be careful. We don't set ourselves up for a fall by, telling people it's really good for people's health to be switching out of a meat product and be eating highly processed uh, substitute products all of the time. Of course, now and again, totally fine. But everything we make is 100% made by Mother Nature. I'm banging, you know, get a bit more of the old school, get, getting all the goodness from the variety of plants that we eat because we only really eat from three different grains most of the time. So there is so much out there for us to explore. So I'd say get inspired by chefs and people that talk about food and, and then just keep trying different ingredients, going to the farmer's markets, trying to um, trying to buy as much local and seasonal as possible. It just, it tastes better. And also it's, it's definitely healthier for us. Mm. I, I, and, and again, this is something that you perhaps wouldn't expect me to say. People shouldn't eat bowl <laughs> if if they can cook from scratch. Like I would always encourage people to try to cook from scratch as much as possible. But I can hand on heart say, if they're not and they want to eat something that's been prepared, then we're right at the top of our game in terms of natural and, and good for you. Um, and I love it when people have some of our curries or some of our shakes or soups, and then they go on to start making their own dal or whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, that's the way I look at things. This is it. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we're all so busy, aren't we? And cooking from scratch is is amazing and I really enjoy it. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's <laughs> you're literally on your knees after a, you know, a hectic day at work. You might have kids and you know, whatever going on, clubs to drive them to. And you're like, oh my God, what are we going to have for dinner? So it's, you know, it's definitely um, just a brilliant kind of thing for those situations. Yeah, that's what I love about 
vegan cooking is that it's just really exciting, like experimenting with veg. Like who knew you could do, I don't know, make smoked salmon out of carrots or do you know what I mean? Or or make like Derek Sarno makes kind of like steaks or whatever from mushrooms. It's just it's it blows my mind still now. And I think anyone new to this space um, has, you know, an, an, an exciting journey, really, don't they? If they go down that route rather than just going, OK, well, I'm just going to keep eating sausage and mash, but I'll get a, a veggie sausage or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm um, I'm a big fan of Derek. I've been lucky enough to meet with him. I've been um, I've actually I've been lucky enough to cook in his kitchen as well. And, and I've learned, like there's there's more he knows about mushrooms. Than I think most people on the planet, but that's the thing and that's why I said kind of when you first asked about what the top tip was people should be all over Derek's social feeds and look at what he does to mushrooms and then go and have some fun with it yourself like it's 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 so much more rewarding and clearly the best way to do it is to go foraging yourself or to be growing your own ingredients we all know that and as 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 the UK certainly becomes more and more urbanized, that isn't possible for lots of us that live in flats or small uh, houses with no gardens, but it's just about trying to be as close to the soil as possible. And then, um, yeah, cook and play and have fun, have fun with it. But there's no doubt about it. It is much harder. Like everybody knows, um, like you've just said there, if people are eating sausage and mash, it, it's pretty zombie mode, isn't it? it? Go home, put the oven on, uh whack some yeah. sausages in <laughs> and then you've got some mash that's there and then you then your your dinner's done <laughs> if you're opening a fridge and looking at a load of fresh ingredients and then you're opening up your, your spice cupboard and and then you're looking at all um the legumes and and all the beans and 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 and, and you've got you've you've it does take more effort to be making delicious wholesome plant-based foods throughout the day but it's one of those things you need to be passionate about it and then you just need to stick with it. And like most things in life, it's a bit of a challenge to begin with, but it's worth the effort. Yeah. And I think when you start feeling good after eating these meals, you know, like, like you were saying, some of the dishes that you do at bowl, or, you know, all these like lovely flavors and just, it's all really clean because it's all just vegetables. So you feel energized and healthy afterwards rather than kind of like, Oh, you know, I'm in a carb coma or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It does. It does. If if you are going for the fresh stuff, I worry that if 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 people are going too much down the processed vegan food front, I I I I I, I don't think it's it's healthy. Mm. Um, but it's like any overly processed food. Um, so I definitely think. Eating vegan doesn't equal being healthy. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely a massive step forward. But then I think it's about eating a lot more of what Mother Nature makes, less about what humans make in processed factories. So I think that subtle shift, I think, is, um, and hey, it's all about balance, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, whether. I'm semi-regularly eating these meat substitutes myself and I absolutely love them um, at the weekends and so on and so forth. But there's just, it feels like there's more and more being written in newspapers and magazines now about um, people saying eating vegan is not healthy. And um, uh, yeah, uh, they're wrong if you're eating the right vegan food. Yeah, exactly. Whole food, plant-based it's the way to go, yeah. isn't it? So just to finish, what plans have you got for the future then yourself and with Bowl? So I guess like everyone, we're still dusting ourselves off from COVID. <laughs> it's, yeah. been, <laughs> it's, it's been a brutal few years. Most of the people that have supported us over the years are, are busy young professionals in the main and or students and traveling around and grabbing and going either on the way to work or on the way home and clearly that whole behavior has completely shifted so we definitely had to take stock a little bit and focus and refocus and and relook at the strategy but uh, we've got lots of innovation to come so we launched our power shakes the first ever completely whole nutritionally complete meal last year and it's a food to go product that 
no one was no one was doing much going so it was not the best time of year to be launching a product like that so we've got lots more to come in that space and um, our veg pots and our one pot meals have been around now for for quite a while and so we've got big innovation plans there we've never really cracked dinner as a brand I'd love bowl to be available at any time of day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacking. So definitely a lot of work and the developers on on where we want to take dinner. Uh, And then I think the other big thing is international. So we've got global ambitions for the brand. We launched in Ireland a couple of months ago. So that's our first foray into the international markets. And yeah, I I would love for bowl to be available on continental Europe over in America, get back to surfing and snowboarding and working on the same day uh, if possible um, that sounds so, lovely yeah, yeah exactly it sounds great doesn't it I'm not I'm not sure it's ever going to happen no but I can keep dreaming <laughs> yeah so I I honestly I pinch myself most days because I think food is the new rock and roll everyone has a point of view on it there uh, I think people are realizing now what we is the single biggest environmental decision we face every every day and whether people are omnivores or vegans, uh, we're, we're going to keep reading and learning about the impact our food choices have. And I think we as a generation have an opportunity to really reset things uh, like what happened in the 1970s in a bad way. We can reset things and, think, and, and turn things a little bit more pe- positive and we'll use technology for that. And I think things are going to change a lot over the next few years. So as an entrepreneur in this space, uh, I've I've got plans, but we're going to be pragmatic. We're going to keep adopting. We're going to keep changing. We're going to keep pushing. We'll never rest on our laurels, but we will continue to inspire the world to eat more plants every single day. And and that is our purpose forevermore. Well, you've certainly inspired me today. Thank you so much, Paul. So if you head to the Bowl social media and website, you can find out more about their products. And you can also order from there now, which is great. The uh, Did you say the soups and power shakes, which I'm... Yeah, the power soups and the power shakes on Deliverable, yeah, our website, which is right. great. I need to try these shakes. They sound good. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're fab. And yeah, watch this space because this summer they're going to be made even better. Thanks so much, Holly. Cheers for taking time to listen to us. Well, that's it from the Simply Vegan podcast for this week. But join us next week for our 100th episode celebrations. We're going to be having a little party, some live taste testing, and um, hopefully chatting to Heather Mills. So lots to look forward to. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a review to help us reach more lovely vegan people out there. Thanks for listening. 